there, hi out there. Today we are here at Kids Craft Lab and we are doing a really fun painting project called Galaxy Animal Silhouettes. And let me show you what we need to get started and then we'll have some fun. Okay, so I have several sheets of watercolor paper and I have, of course, some paint brushes and I have some liquid watercolor paint, a whole tray of I've got about five different colors. And then in case you don't have liquid watercolor paint, this will work just fine. So I have some of that. Um, I have some pipettes for picking up the paint and dropping it onto my paper. I have some, some water, <laughs> got to put a wash over it. I have, I, I went to my computer and I, I printed out several different silhouette shapes to trace and I happen to have a squirrel and a moose and a bear and a turtle but you can pick your own whichever animal that you think is pretty cool and I I blew them up to about you know paper size <laughs> so that's what we've got now I also have um, some masking tape and I have some newspaper to protect the surface of my table. And, and if you don't have newspaper, I've got cereal box cardboard and, and a coat cardboard, a coat case cardboard, and that will work as well. So let's see, what am I forgetting? Oh, of course I have paper towel because things get messy. And I have some, I have some white poster paint. And I also have several different kinds of salt just to make uh, kind of a fancy um, effect with our watercolor. So let's get started. So we're going to do animal silhouettes um, with our watercolor paper. And I'm going to do a bear first. And what happens is once you start painting, your paper gets really soggy and you have to let it dry. So what we're gonna do is trace the silhouettes first. So I'm gonna move my table back here so you can see what I'm doing. And I am going to trace the bare silhouette onto my paper. And I'm gonna use a marker so you can see, this is gonna actually be the back of your paper. So I'm tracing my animal, my bear, all around here, around my silhouette, that I printed out and cut out from the computer all around his legs, just like this. And I'm almost done coming around. There, I've traced a nice silhouette. There it is right there, there's my bear. And now that is the back of the paper. We're gonna do the painting on the front and then when it's dry, you can cut it out and you'll have the shape of a bear and it will look really spacey and galaxy -y. <laughs> galaxy -y, I don't know if that's a word, but I'm going to turn my tabletop camera on and we're gonna get started with the paint. Here we go. Okay, now I'm gonna move that there. All right, so whenever I mix a lot of colors, just to get started, I'm going to use um, a limited kind of palette. I'm only going to use three of my colors. But before I do that, I think I'll protect my table with my paper there. And sometimes when you put a lot of wash and a lot of water on watercolor paint, what happens is your paper starts to curl up. So I'm going to tape <laughs> my watercolor piece of paper down onto my table protector. You can tape it to newspaper if you have it, or if you're using just maybe an old painting tablecloth, or I have newspaper, you can just tape it right down. And that will stop it from curling around when you wanna work with it. So I'm taping it on all four sides, and that will keep my paper in place. Okay. So there we go. So like I said a minute ago, whenever I'm mixing watercolor paints, I don't need a huge amount right at first. So I'm just going to pick three colors to begin with. And I've got some sort of pink here. 
and I've got some blue here. And I am looking for purple here. Yeah, here it is. So I have pink, blue, and purple. Those seem to be kind of spacey colors. So what I'm gonna do is take a pipette and dip it into my first color, which is blue, and just start dripping it all over my paper. Now, if you don't have a pipette or liquid watercolor, if you just have um, a regular paint box like this and some brushes, then, oops, let me get a good brush here. Then what you do is take your water and wet the color that you want. And I'm gonna do blue because I've already put blue on here. I'm gonna wet my blue big bunch of wet blue and then shake it over the top. So you can shake it, it's just a little messier. But that's how you do it if you don't have liquid watercolor. If you just have a paint box, you just take your brush and go shake, 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 and you get drops. Or you could go bling, 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 that's easy too. Just hit your, hit your paper with the brush. Okay, so now I'm gonna continue with the pipettes. Now I did blue, so I think now I need some pink. Ooh, so I'm just dropping that all over. Whoa, I got a big splashy squirt there. And I'm going like this, do, 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 wow. And now it's time for my third color, which I am going to do purple. That's a very good deep space color, I think. So here goes some purple, Ooh. <laughs> dripping all over the place. Purple, purple, purple. Okay, so now you've got some drips. It's already looking awesome. Now, here comes the water. I got some water over here and I am going to take a big fat brush. Big fat brush. Because I'm not gonna do details right now. I am gonna dip my brush in the water and then just do a wash all over my paper. Ooh, look what's happening. Dip my paper, I'm using lots of water. Woo! And I'm mixing those colors together, the blues, the purples, and the pinks with my wash. And that's looking super cool. And I'm just filling in all the white spaces by washing my paint all over the place. Ooh, it's looking good. Now I think I want some more. You can always add some more color. There, I just added some more pink. And so I'm gonna wash it all over here. And I'm filling in all of the, all of the white spots and I'm making some swirls. Woo, more water, okay. And I think I'm gonna add some blue down here at the bottom. And there we go. And some maybe blue up here at the top too. Whoops, drip, drip, drip. <laughs> and mixing it together. Ooh, that's gonna look great. Doo, doo, doo. All right, some blue down there. And swirling it and swirling it and swirling it. And a little bit of purple too. There, there, there. So now I've got <laughs> a lot of water on my piece of paper. Okay, so now let's add, let's do something to add some effects. Now I've got a lot of juice on my page. I've got some puddles. So I'm gonna get rid of my puddles with the paper towel, I'm gonna to soak up just some of the puddles, just quick like this. I'm dabbing it just to get rid of all those juicy puddles. There, now I just dabbed it just a little bit so I don't have water puddling all over on the floor. And now we're gonna add some effects. I have some salt that I'm gonna do. And when you add salt to watercolor, I have to wait a minute and see what happens. There, I did some pretty coarse salt. 
but I'm gonna do some regular table salt too. And let's see what starts to happen to my watercolors. I'm gonna add some salt here and there. Starts to curl it up just a little bit. Okay. That might take a minute or two. So while we're working on that, I'm gonna add some, some white paint by sprinkling it. And so I've got a brush and I have something to tap my brush with. So what I'm gonna do is, let's see, oh, I had a pencil here a minute ago. Yeah, I do, I have a pencil. I'm going to tap my brush and try to put some small white stars all over the place. So I'm sticking my brush in the white paint and now I'm going to tap it. Let's see if I can get some small drips by tapping my brush. There, I'm getting some. I was hoping to get some smaller taps. It's not working too well. Maybe I need my brush wet. Let's try that. I'm wetting my brush now. And then I'm going to stick it back in the wet paint. Now let's see what happens. There we go. Oh yeah, that helps a little. So some stars that are in there. And there you go. Can you see how the salt's starting to react with the watercolor? And I have some stars. So I'm going to set this one aside. And this one, I don't know if you're using some newspaper, but we'll do this one with newspaper. And we'll tape it down. But first, I got to find, let's see, I have a squirrel, I have a moose. Let's do the moose. All right. So there's my paper. There's my moose. Here's my paper. And I am going to trace it. Okay, around the antlers. Remember, this is going to be the back side of your paper. And I'm going to use different colors in my palette this time. I use three. I use purple and blue and pink. But I have some black and I have some red. And let's see, I need one more color. I wonder what I will use. I have some green, but I kind of like purple, so I, I haven't decided yet. <laughs> okay, so there, that is my mousse. And I'm going to turn it over and do the painting on this side. But uh, of course, I'm going to tape it down a little bit because I get puddles. <laughs> There we go, taping it down, taping it down, and taping it down. Okay, all right, so what, I think I am gonna do red. Oh, I love red. Let's see what kind of effects if we get, if we do some red. Okay, red and black. Oops, that's green. Where's black? That's purple. Here's black. So I have red and black and one more color. Hmm, I think I'm going to do purple. I might have to add some green, but we'll see. All right, so again, just drop some, drop some colors all over your paper with the pipette. I'm making a bunch of them. This is gonna be a really dark space print, maybe. We'll find out. I love the way watercolors mix together. Okay, so that's enough black. I think I am going to do some purple. There's purple. Boy, it's hard to tell the difference between purple and black, you know? I'm gonna put a bunch on here. And then my last color, red. Oh, 
Oh, sweet. That really adds some color. I like that. And because, oh, you know what? This isn't red. This is orange, but that's okay. I like that too. <laughs> it's red orange. Now let's see what happens when we wash all those colors together with my washing brush, my fat washing brush. Okay, so here's the water. It turned a little purple from washing it last time. So now I'm getting a whole bunch of water on my brush and I'm washing all these colors together. Whoa, black is kind of taking over. Maybe that's a good thing. Ooh, I kind of like this. I'm gonna add just a little bit more orange. And whoa, look at that. Now before, before I get rid of my puddles, what I think I'll do is put the salt on it right now just to see if that makes a difference. Because I looked at my painting over here and my salt didn't really make any good looking swirl. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do some salt right now. Whoa, my puddles are shining in my overhead light. <laughs> so I'm shaking out some salt now, a couple different kinds of salt because I have big grains of salt and I have little grains of salt and who knows what's gonna happen to that. Whoa, and I, you know what? I also have some rock salt from, from the leftover from the winter time and I'm gonna put some of those here and there. Big chunks, but you might not have any rock salt. That was just in case. Okay, so, whoa, that's kind of looking cool and streaky. So should we add some stars with our white paint? I think so. All right, so here's the white paint. And here is, I'm gonna add a little bit of water to my brush because this paint was kind of thick. And then I'm gonna tap. Ooh. Boy, I like the way this one's turning out. There. Whoa, okay. So, I'll take those off. And there we go. Whoa, I'm gonna hold this one up to the light or the camera. That's looking really good. I like that one a lot. Um, I'm going to let that one sit for a minute and we're going to go back to the FaceTime camera and we're going to check out the first one that we did and cut out our animal silhouette. Okay, so here's the first one we did and it's looking pretty good, but I'm going to, I'm tapping the back with my finger like that and I'm trying to get the salt off of it so <laughs> it won't get all over. Now it's not completely dry, but it's, I think it'll be okay. So I'm gonna pull off the, the tape and pull this off of the cardboard. And then we're gonna flip it over and cut our silhouette. Now at home, you might wanna wait till it's completely dry. But look, it came through on the back, but I can still see the lines of my silhouette. And I gotta get rid of this tape here, uh-oh. I must have got this really, really wet. Oops. Yeah, I did. Okay. So I am going to pull off. My tape isn't coming off. There we go. Ta-da. So I don't know if you can see this up close, but I'm going to try to show it to you as soon as I get that last piece of tape off. Can you see the bare silhouette on there? Yep. That's what I'm going to cut. All right. So I'm going to take my scissors and cut out my bare silhouette. And remember, we drew that silhouette on the back side. And if you wait for an hour or so, your silhouette's going to be dry. And it will look really great. Okay, so bear, bear, bear. Bear, bear, bear. Cutting out the legs of my bear and around his nose. 
Now, if I used a marker to trace my silhouette, and I can see that when I put the water wash on it, it kind of smeared the silhouette a little bit. So if you have a pencil, it might work out better. Or <laughs> a permanent marker, that might work out good too. Okay, I just have to cut out the legs and then we'll hold up the bare silhouette. And then we'll see what's happening on my other print that we just made too, the one with the black and the purple and the orange. I can't wait for that. That's looking more spacey than this. <laughs> more galaxy-like. Okay, there, a foot. Okay, so there it is. A galaxy bear. And what you can do is after it dries, if you have some other poster board and you want to mount it, you can stick it onto something so it will really show up. Or, you know, you can just put it on your refrigerator or if you have some construction paper that's a different color, there's your bear. <laughs> or whatever animal you decided to do. So now I'm gonna get back to my crazy looking black and purple and orange galaxy. So let's take a look what happened to that. I'm gonna, um, can you see? Yeah, you can see that pretty good. I am going to pull off the tape first because I had trouble with that a minute ago. It is not <laughs> staying. Okay, here we go. Wow. The salt has really kind of swirled some of this around. Uh oh, there we go. One more piece of tape. And I'm going to pick it up and kind of dump off some of the salt. And I'm dumping off some of my puddles too. And it being my paper towel in just a little bit because <laughs> it's very drippy. There. Cool. Now, when I let this dry just a little bit more, there's my moose silhouette on the back. I don't know if you can see that, but I can see it just barely. I'm gonna cut out a moose. It's not that wet, so maybe I will try to cut out the moose while we're sitting here and shake some more salt off. Because I think if I wait <laughs> to cut out this moose silhouette, what might happen is uh, my marking pen might disappear. So I'm cutting down a leg and cutting all around the moose silhouette. Now this is a step that you would probably do when your paper is all dry. It's getting there. I like the colors that I used. You can use just any color that you want, but I would also limit it to about three. So the shape of my moose is starting to take shape. The antlers are over here. And I am going to wait because <laughs> it's really too wet to cut. But there you go. So I have two more animals, but it's kind of the same process. First you trace it on the back, then you drop some paint on, then you put a wash over it, then you wait for it to dry. And then there you have a galaxy bear. There he is, star moose. All right. Well, thanks for joining us today. We hope you had some fun. We hope you like to play with some of the supplies that we have. And we hope that you found a really cool animal to make a galaxy out of. So that's it for today. And thanks for joining us. seen before. And here's where you get to make a choice. Was it? Ah!
A giant Tyrannosaurus Rex. And I'm just gonna stick some pine cones in my box. And um, then the fun starts. I just start rolling them around. The air rushing out of the balloon is gonna push that balloon up. So let's see what happens. All right, one, two, three. Oh, wow. So that's how rockets kind of work. We are going to build two different kinds of rockets today. Four times. 